What's up YouTube? Today I want to talk to you about the smartest way to be smart about your hard drives. When we come over here to data protection, uh, we can see here that there are periodic tests going on for the smart test. And this is a short test that runs at 1 a.m. every day on my server. And that's great because the smart testing needs to happen. But the problem is what do I do when I actually need to know what's going on with my disks? A lot of times what will happen is by the time something goes wrong, you'll be on your dashboard and you'll see a warning come up saying something's been deprecated or your pool is having a problem and by then it's too late. So I want to show you guys a really cool app today called Scrutiny. So let's go over here to Discover Apps. I'm going to type in Scrutiny and this is the Scrutiny app and this is a heart app for smart monitoring historical trends. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and install this really fast. And I'm not going to make any changes. I'm going to leave everything completely the same because this doesn't really require anything. And in terms of the config storage and the influx DB storage, I don't need a whole lot of this. And that's mainly because it's just reading the smart sector um, tests that are off my disks already, which are stored on my hard drives, on special parts of my hard drive. So I don't really need to keep a whole lot of data for this. So I'm just gonna leave it just like it is. I'm gonna click install. I'm gonna let this run and I'm gonna show you the web UI. The scrutiny is up and running. Let's go ahead and jump over into the web UI. And you can see here, this is the scrutiny dashboard. And it's very pretty. So this is my actual TrueNOS machine. This is not um, the usual one that I use for uh, testing on Proxmox because I need real hard drive data. And I want to show you guys this real hard drive data. So here we are, and this is our dashboard. So you'll see what I have going on right here is about six hard drives in my current TrueNOS machine. I've got four 3.6 terabyte or really four terabyte Seagate Iron Wolves in a RAID Z1. Uh, I've got a boot drive, uh, which is this one right here, and I've got one for my apps, and these are both SSDs. So this is a 240 gig SSD, and this is a some other kind of SSD, a 500 gig SSD. I don't know what brand name this is. It doesn't really matter. Um, so down here we have some temperature gauges and stuff, but I don't really want to worry about that. What I want to keep paid the most attention to are these four drives right here, because these are my hard disk drives, my spinning rust disks that are holding all of my most important data. So let's go ahead and click here. Uh, and then these three dots and click view details. And then we'll go ahead and show all attributes. So when I look at this, you'll see on the left here, uh, first off, the most important thing to see is all these statuses are passed. There's no real errors here. This tells you the device, the device model. If you want to know what kind of drive I have, this is it. And this is the identifier for the drive. This is the serial number um, and a whole bunch of other stuff that you're probably not going to need to know. Uh, the most important thing down here that you want to pay attention to is the power on years. Uh, my drives are about three years old. They're getting a little bit up there, but because they're Iron Wolves and because I got them brand new, they should be pretty good for a while, but they're, they're, they're starting to get a little up there. So let's take a look at the smart ATA attributes, 23 visible, zero hidden. So I'm going to show you guys all the attributes here. What I want to see is a whole lot of green. And you'll see here, I do have a warrant on this is the spin up time. And this warning, when I click into it right here, I can expand it. So let's click this little I and you'll see this drawer opens right here. It says it's the average time of spindle spin up from zero to fully operational measured in milliseconds. So mine is coming up at about 93 milliseconds or so. Um, and it's telling me that this is a little bit slow. The reason I'm seeing this on my drives is because again, my drives are about three years old. They are starting to get a little bit older. This is not a huge deal. So the question becomes, what, what, what is a huge deal? What, what, what should I be looking for when I'm looking at these results? The first thing you're looking for is that all these things are green. But if they're not all green, like in my case, a warning, how do you know whether or not this warning is very serious or not very serious at all? And that's going to come down to the ID number. So you'll see this column right here says ID, and it's 1, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8, 9, et cetera, and their little memory address, 0x1, 0x3. I just want you to pay attention to this number. There's this regular inter, uh, integer in the beginning. There's only a few fields that really, really matter. So the first thing you want to do is you want to score down to 5 reallocated sectors count. So when I click this right here, it'll tell you what they are. Um, basically it says the number of bad sectors that have been found and remapped. Thus the higher attribute value, the more sectors the drive has had to reallocate. These are, this is a bad sector count, essentially. If you have a lot of bad sector count, it means that you're likely to have a disk failure. So it says right here, a drive which has had any reallocations at all is significantly more likely to fail in the imminent months. We want to see a big fat zero here, and we do. I have measuring zero. The threshold is 10. Um, but long story short, if you see anything on this five at all, any value um, in the value column for line five or for ID number five, this is a problem. This is something you want to pay attention to. Let's keep scrolling down. We're going to go all the way down to 187. So down here, this is it, 187, reported uncorrectable sectors. The count of errors that could not be recovered using hardware ECC. Um, again here, the value is zero. We want to see a zero in this case. So anything that's reported as uncorrectable is in Good sign that there's something wrong with your hard disks. 187 is one of those, you just want to have this be zero the whole time. If anything comes up here at all, 
like start backing up your data. There's two more fields we're going to look at, and that's 197 and 198. Sometimes 196 as well, but uh, what I, you'll see here 196. I don't even have in this case um, just because of the drive that I have. because These are Seagate. So 197, 198, the current pending sector count and the uncorrectable sector count, and these are the offline sectors. Um, these are bad. If you have any of these, these are indicating of an, ind an, ind an indicator that your drives are failing. And you'll see here the description, which I'm not going to read to you, but basically read errors on a sector will not remap. Um, yeah, not not good. Here, the uncorrectable sectors, total number of uncertain, un arise in this value is, indicates the effects of disk surface and problems in the mechanical subsystem. Again, you'll see here in these columns, the right column is zero and zero. So this very right column is what they call the threshold column. So we come down to 197, 198, they both have a threshold of zero, which means any value at all in these two fields are indicative of a problem. You don't even get like a little buffer. Like, oh, one or two is not bad. It's like, no, anything greater than zero, especially if it starts rising, it indicates a failure or an imminent failure in this case. So that's that's a good thing to watch. Um, line nine uh, is going to be your power on hours in this case. It's going to show you the hour the power on state. So uh, in this case, this is the raw value, but you'll see down here it does all the math for me. My drive's been on three years, five months, one week, six days, fifteen hours, and thirty minutes. That's just a good thing to keep an eye on, just to know your uh, your disk health. Um, so this is SDD. So I'm going to have to do this for all four disks. So, uh, this is the first one here was SDD over here S. What is this? this is SDA, so I'm going to view details here. Let's show all attributes. You'll see here I have another warning. I have the same warning for all of them. You're going to see as I go through all four disks, the spin-up time is slow. And that's only because um, these drives are getting old. Down here, you'll see a command timeout. So it says here I have, a th I have a value of 100, the threshold is zero. The count of aborted operations due to HDD timeout, this should be a this should be equal to zero. In other words, as my drives are spinning, not necessarily as they're spinning up, but just as they're going through their paces, um, sometimes we're getting timeouts here. And again, this is just an, indi an, ind an indicator of my case, older drives. So this is not the end of the world um, for me specifically. The reason for that, in my case, is going to be the fact that these drives are not, there's nothing wrong with these drives yet. So I, I don't want you to think that I'm, I'm looking at this and it's, it's minor, but it's not a big deal. See here again, spin up time and command timeout on all these drives. They're just getting a little old, guys. Don't get, I, don't, I don't get super uptight about this stuff until I start seeing real problems on the lines like I showed you about. So, stop, so this one even has a start, stop start count. This one's going up a little high. Spit up time again. Command time out here. Again, these are still in the warnings. Nothing here has failed. Like when, the most thing, most important thing I want you to see is when you go to this dashboard, everything comes up as passed. Once once one of these doesn't come up as passed, then that's when you should really start to worry. And again, keep an eye on those lines, like 5, 187, uh, and then 197, 198. Those lines right there. 187 and 197, 198. Those are the lines that you really want to pay attention to. When you see start seeing things there, even if it's past, that's when you need to start worrying. But those little other things that I'm looking at here, especially this one, this one's got like three warnings, I think it was. Uh, yeah, there's three warnings here. None of these, none of these are a big deal. I, this is not anything uh, to worry about. So just don't don't get super uptight about your hard drives. I just wanted to show you guys this really cool tool because I think it's a really great, easy way to visualize what's going on with your smart test because when we do it in TrueNOS and we come over here to our data protection tab, yeah, it's running, but you're going to have to look at it in the command line. So the way you would want to do that is you're going to want to come up to your shell, for example, and I'll show you what the raw values of this looks like. So we want to do a smart CTL dash A slash dev slash, let's look at SDA, for example. This is the actual numbers that Scrutiny is pulling in and making pretty. So here's your row, here's your ID number, and you can see like line five, for example, Raw value zero, uh, 187, zero, 197 is here, zero, 198, zero. So that's, those are, that's what I would look, look look for if I was just doing this, the, the raw, uh, looking at this in, in command line. You can see this is not the easiest thing to read or to see. <clears throat> it tells me all the same information that you'll see here. Uh, the, the annoying part is just like, I just don't like looking at it like this and it's nowhere near as easy. You have to type this for one. It's just, it's just kind of a pain. This is way prettier. This is way, way better. And again, it's a super lightweight, easy app to run. I recommend you have this installed on your system. And every once in a while, maybe just peek at it, especially if you're noticing any issues, this is a good place to start. So I hope you guys got a lot out of this. This is a really cool way. I think you should just keep an eye on your hard drives if you're really worried about things and just a good practice to have in general so you can keep an eye on your NAS and all your data. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you guys want to support me, please buy me a coffee. If you have any questions, please post them on Discord. And if you want to talk about anything about this video specifically, please post them in the discussion uh, below. Thank you guys so much for watching.